Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this video, which is about AlphaZero's attacking strategies. One of the most amazing features about AlphaZero's games is the way that it builds up its long-term attacks. It's not just individual moves, rather it's the way a series of moves combine across the whole board to give a coordinated attacking strategy. In this video, we'll show you five such attacking strategies of AlphaZero and we'll guide you through what AlphaZero is thinking. So for each example, first of all, we'll give an explanation of uh, what the position is actually uh, about. Then we'll give you a chance to pause the video and uh, work out what, uh, what you would have played. And then afterwards, we'll show you what AlphaZero actually played. Fantastic. Let's give it a go. This position is puzzle number one, and it's about switching the flank of the attack. It's from a game where Alpha Zero is white and Stockfish is black. And in this position, Alpha Zero has already sacrificed two kingside pawns on the GNH files to open up the file against the black king. However, it isn't easy to intensify the pressure or to open any more lines up. Can you guess what was Alpha Zero's next move was? and what the idea was. You can pause the video now. Right, well, in this position, um, Alpha Zero played uh, a move that caught me by completely by surprise, and it's this move Rook GG1. Now, I was expecting, uh, since Alpha Zero had sacrificed two pawns on the king's side, I was expecting Alpha Zero to bring its uh, its queen maybe to the king's side and really try and hammer away at those GNH pawns. But in actual fact, that's um, uh, that, that's actually got a very limited uh, uh, chance of success. What Alpha Zero uh, decided was that um, its bishops need to get involved in the um, uh, in the attack. Um, and uh, what it actually needs to uh, to achieve that, it needs to actually clear the centre of pawns. And so what Alpha Zero does, it um, actually redeploys its rooks so that it can advance its pawns on the queen side and in the centre, clear the centre of pawns, and then afterwards it will return to the king side. Uh, it's an ab absolutely fantastic uh, strategy here. Um, the first little thing here is that it puts its king to uh, to safety, out of the way of any random checks, breaks in the centre, breaks in the queen side, and then look at that rook coming over from the king side to the queen side. Um, white is ready to open up the c file and invade on the c file as well. And after black plays knight f6, then alpha zero sacrificed another pawn in the centre. And again, the rook moving from the king side to the uh, uh, to the centre just in order to open lines for the um, for the bishops. Stockfish tried its best to keep the centre closed, but after d5 takes bishop d3, as you can see, the whole centre had been opened for the for the uh, white bishops pointing towards the uh, the black king. And um, just uh, I'll just show you the uh, the rest of the moves um, uh, a little bit quickly. Um, this is a, a very famous game now, and it, we called it in our book, we called it exactly how to attack. Exactly, because this is the way it's got to be done. The amazing thing about it is that uh, you see Alpha Zero, you know, consolidating in the centre here, but then just towards the end, everything switches back to the king side. And this move F4... The pawn comes into f5, attacking this pawn on g6. And as you can see, even though Alpha Zero's rooks have moved away from the king side to the queen side and the center, in the end it comes back to the king side, aided by the two bishops. The center cleared of pawns, and uh, Stockfish's king is helpless. So that was uh, an, an incredible, uh, incredible idea I found. Uh, just um, leaving the king side for what it was, opening up the rest of the lines, and then coming back to the king side later. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. A less well-known example in actual fact. This one, puzzle number two, is called Always Look to the King Side. And again in this game, Alpha Zero is white and Stockfish is black. Stockfish grabbed two pawns in the opening and then gave one back to weaken white's 
structure and block the sea fowl. Stockfish's queen side is still not developed, restricted by white century pace pieces, the knight on e5 and the queen on e4. And white has pressure along the a1 to h, h1 to a8 uh, long diagonal. Stockfish intends to push back white's advance pieces with f5 and g5, so pushing on the king side, and perhaps bishop f6, f6 and e5. So against that, how would how does white continue? You can pause the video now. <clears throat> so this is one of these uh, wonderful moments where this is really a, a strategy that only Alpha Zero follows. And um, um, you know, I was uh, analysing the game, leaving my engines running in the background, and uh, well, this move didn't even make it into the top uh, the top eight lines. Um, it's a really incredible idea, um, Alpha Zero. What would be a normal idea for White? Um, well, I think normally in, in this type of position, you would um, uh, maybe expect White to be trying to uh, advance on the queen side, target the c6 pawn, maybe invade on the d file, maybe exchange of queens. You know, you're looking to to try and make the most of your bishop. Um, here on g2, pointing towards the queen side. Mm. Um, what but Alpha I, Zero is thinking of attacking. Alpha Zero is thinking of attacking, and um, what it plays here um, is this move uh, g4. Um, now, what is the point of g4? Um, the first thing is that um, if black plays uh, the move f5 um, to chase away the uh, the white queen, then white plays g takes f5, e takes f5, and a move like queen a4. Um, and the cunning point is that if black continues with g5, I mean, these knights, these pieces in the center, knight on e5, bishop on f4, um, it's, um, uh, yeah, I mean, they're very, very, uh, uh, they're very, very strong. So black wants to chase them away. And here it actually looks as if um, uh, white's losing a piece. However, after uh, queen b3 check, king g7, there's the cunning idea of bishop e3, when queen takes e5, loses to bishop d4. So this move g4 um, is a, a very cunning way of, um, of actually um, stopping black from freeing himself with f5, chasing away the white queen. Um, now there's um, um, another idea that black's got. In the game, uh, black played the move um, f6, which um, we'll uh, we'll see a little bit later, um, but there was um, a little problem with the, with a pawn on e6 in actual fact. So, uh, for example, after knight takes c6, as happened in the game, then queen e6 coming with check was a very big threat. So, what um, uh, what I was looking at here um, was this move king h8. I spent a lot of time uh, analysing this. Um, Black's idea is just to play f6 and e5, but not have any problems along this a2, g8 diagonal. And here, alpha zero, um, actually, when we asked alpha zero, uh, it came up with the same line that I analysed, exactly the same line. I was so proud. Uh, g5, making use of that g pawn. Black plays f6, but now, of course, um, the king side is uh, is weak and uh, and opened. But how does uh, does white make use of this? Well, just look at that g file that's been open now. Thanks to this move g4, and white plays king h1, queen f2, and rook g1. Amazing. I mean, this is a you know this is a, a kind of a Catalan opening where normally you're putting pressure on the on the queen side, and here out of nowhere you're attacking on the king side. Look at all of white's pieces are pointing towards that black king. Exactly. I mean, this knight uh, you can't can't be taken. F takes c5. I've got bishop takes c5. So um, one of the nicest variations um, was this move, queen e2, knight g6 check, takes, takes, bishop d3, very typical stockfish, always got his pieces organised to um, um, to cover, um, you know, at the last moment. But um, I had this, uh, a very nice line here, um, bishop e4, rook f7 and rook e3. Um, and notice again that uh, Black's pieces on the queen side completely undeveloped. 
and actually this is the the key point and this is the reason why um uh why this line works for uh for white i mean look how many pawns white has sacrificed you know three pawns and a piece but here white's got a decisive continuation i'll give you the first move and now uh, do you want to have a little guess at the uh at the finishing touch here It's uh, it's one of my favourite uh, tactics, actually. Um, um, so the rook on g1 is cutting off the uh, the king from the g file, and we've got a rook on the third rank ready to swing over. So um, in actual fact, queen takes rook springs to mind. Queen takes rook springs to mind. King takes rook h3 check. Bishop h6. Rook h6 checkmate. And uh, yeah, I mean, when you think that um, you know this is a this is a this is a, a, a Catalan opening. I mean, uh, what on earth is happening here? So, um, in actual fact, in the game, um, uh, Stockfish played uh, the move f6, and there was a, a very a sequence of a number of very cunning little tactical points that you notice with g4. So after knight takes, queen takes, queen e3, skewering the uh, the queen uh, and the rook. Queen c8, bishop takes a8, and stockfish went e5. And you notice that one of the cunning points of having the uh, the pawn on g4 is that the bishop can now, after check, can retreat to g3. Retreat to g3. If it didn't have the pawn on g4, the bishop would actually be trapped, which is uh, uh, quite funny. And um, after queen takes g4, um, actually alpha zero played played this very nicely. Um, just queen e4. Um, Offering the exchange of queens, um, Stockfish went for it and nabbed another um, another pawn. But after rook d1, rook d8 is coming in, and once the rooks get exchanged, black, despite having two pawns to the exchange, cannot um, hold the position. And you notice as well this knight on b8, still undeveloped, 27 moves in. So um, really nice strategy from uh, from Alpha Zero there. Um, really, really nice. Um, okay, let's have a look at the uh, at the next game. Uh, we will say save and continue. Discard changes and continue. Okay, the next strategy uh, looks at the rook's pawn, which we're very familiar from with from Alpha Zero games, and this one is the rook's pawn decoy. So in this game, Alpha Zero is white and Stockfish is black. Alpha Zero's central pawn on e5 is under attack, and Alpha Zero's pressure against the queen's side on the face of it doesn't look very exciting. So have a look at this position and think how Alpha Zero continues now for white. You can pause the video now. Right, so um, this is uh, um, uh, again um, uh, a move that's uh, that's really uh, you know Alpha Zero's uh, uh, choice and uh, and not really anyone else's. Um, Alpha Zero sees that uh, it has a pawn on e5. Um, that gives it uh, quite a big king side pawn majority. It's got five pawns on the king side uh, uh, against three from uh, from black. Um, but you know how do you really make something of that well alpha zero decided that it was going to use its queen side rook's pawn as a decoy tie up the black pieces on the queen side make black take time to unravel its pieces even at uh, the cost of a pawn and alpha zero in the meantime was going to be pushing its uh, its uh, pawns on the king side okay so we can guess the move now um which is going to be a6. So well done to anyone who got A6. Um, are there any other moves where our our listeners could get credit for a good guess? Um, well, I mean, F4 is um, is a very reasonable move, protecting the pawn on E5 uh, and also looking for E4 later. Um, the only thing is, is that after B takes A5, then um, essentially white's got the same attack, but the queen side is a lot freer for black. So uh, its pieces are, are just a lot better. Um, this move a6, f4, um, king h1, um, we've noticed this before in, um, in the very first example, the king gets tucked away in the, uh, in the corner, just getting it out of, uh, of random checks. Knight takes a6, f5. So alpha zero has given away a pawn, but, um, it's got its, it's, uh, an f pawn to f5. And of course there are threats like, um, like f6. 
So it ups the uh, the ante further with e4, knight e2. And then, um, well, this knight is aiming to come in with f4 and h5. And um, just to uh, just to show you the next couple of moves, we I think we look at this in uh, another one of our videos that's uh, coming soon on tactics. Um, but after bishop b4, then alpha zero started another series of pawn sacrifices to open up the king side with e6 and f6. And after g takes f6, knight f4, the attack was in full swing. But um, it all comes around from this move a5 to a6 that actually forced black to undevelop a bishop, diverted the knight away from the king side towards the queen side. side. Um, and in the meantime, alpha zero was uh, attacking on the king side. Really a very nice, uh, a very nice game. Ah, the next one is one of my one of my favorites as well, actually, I have to say. Yeah, this is this is one of my favorite Alpha Zero themes as well, um, and it's very useful um, for your own games. It's an attacking theme, and it's about exchanging the opponent's active pieces and leaving them with passive and unstable pieces. So if you leave your opponent with passive pieces, your attack's got a much better chance of breaking through. So in this game, Alpha Zero is white, Stockfish is black, and Stockfish has sacrificed the exchange for two pawns in order to get rid of a dominant Alpha Zero Knight and the strong center. Now Stockfish is attacking the dark squares on the king's side, weakened by the pawn advance to h4. So Stockfish is even threatening mate on h2. So have a think now about this position and see for white how you would continue and what was Alpha Zero's attacking strategy here. You can stop the video now. So this is um, a, a fantastic thing. And actually, um, Alpha Zero came up with this idea um, three or four moves before. And it, again, it's um, something that um, uh, the, the, this approach that it took to, um, to uh, pushing through its advantage in this position is one that only seems to be uh, uh, Alpha Zero's choice. Um, I haven't seen it uh, um, in any other engine lines. Um, what did the other engines like? Well, they were looking for um, for moves much earlier. In actual fact, um, they were looking for uh, for for stuff that prevented all this. Um, but actually, Alpha Zero has encouraged Stockfish to uh, to play this move, uh, Knight F6, Knight G4, um, in order to um, in order to get um, well, in order to get what it gets in the game. Um, the key point about it is is that um, so. Um, Stockfish's uh, last few moves have been h6 and then knight e8 to f6 to g4. And this has activated um, a knight that was you know, already developed. Um, uh, it's taken a couple of moves. And in the meantime, these queenside pieces, rook a8, bishop a8, knight a6, they're still inactive. They're still not being brought into the game. So what Alpha Zero tries to do here, it tries to exchange off black's most active piece. Um, and actually, one of those is the queen on d6. So alpha zero plays queen f4. Now after queen takes f4, um, obvious move would be to play rook takes f4. But here alpha zero play, takes with a knight on f4, which actually just gives a pawn away. Knight e3, rook e1, knight f5. But then the crux of the, of, uh, the whole strategy is to, play, is to play this move g6. And this is an absolutely uh, lovely idea. So the point is now that um, so Stockfish has got these still three passive pieces on the queen side um, and Alpha Zero has brought its rook to the open E file with tempo. It's also got rid of the queen on D6, which was covering the E7 entry point. Now, there is a knight on F5 here that's covering the E7 entry point, but this knight is really unstable. In actual fact, white's got this great move, Bishop H3 coming in, which will chase away the knight. And once the knight gets chased away, then the rook, the white rook, will invade on e7. Now, um, what um, uh, Stockfish did was try and play knight c5, you know, get its knight uh, active and, uh, and activate those queenside pieces. But then there came this beautiful move, h5. And the whole point about it is, is that after h takes g6, f takes g6, h takes g6, this pawn on g6 is pinning the black king to the back rank. 
So black's rook then is going to be pinned to the back rank because if the, the black rook leaves the back rank, then it's going to be back rank mate. And alpha zero often likes to get one of these diagonal pieces like a pawn, queen or bishop right in on that g6 square. Absolutely. That king restricts. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this is... Um, uh, now, what's also going to happen is the bishop's going to move to h3, get rid of the knight on f5, and then the rooks are going to come on the seventh. And um, I mean, what you see is that alpha zero is already assessing itself as completely winning. Um, and Stockfish is actually still takes a few moves to really understand quite how bad it is. It understands that there's pressure, but it only realizes how bad it is in a few moves time. But by then, of course, it's far too late. So you see again, alpha zero exchanging off active pieces. That knight on c5 was decent. So that has to go. And now the rook comes into e7. Bishop e6, the knight on d4 was uh, was active, so alpha zero is happy to offer the exchange. And now Stockfish starts trying to give away pawns, just anything to disrupt the um, the position. But in the end, what happens here? Rook e3, and now the rook is going to come into e7. The other rook is going to come into d7, and it's end of game. And uh, in a few moves' time, Stockfish uh, resigned. Um, but I mean, it's an amazing, really amazing concept. Um, also to see it so many moves in advance, I mean, a lot further forward than uh, than here. Simply the idea of um, swap off the most uh, active piece that the opponent has got, and then even at the cost of a pawn, um, make sure that the opponent's king is a weakness, pinned to the back rank. And with those uh, factors, passive pieces on the queen side, unstable defender on f5, um, and a restricted king on the back rank. Um, well, Alpha Zero understands how dangerous that is, and uh, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, you know, stop. Uh, yeah, you know, Stockfish just took a lot longer to understand quite how bad it was. It understood that it was uh, in danger, but it didn't understand that it was actually completely lost um, until much later. So, really fantastic uh, long-term attacking strategy from uh, Alpha Zero with the queens off, which is uh, you know, also very impressive. Right. The final example. Yeah, our fifth example is about creating kingside targets. So in this game, alpha zero is white, stockfish is black, and white has a number of pawn breaks to aim at. Uh, so for example, c4 to get rid of the c3 pawn, or e4 as well to get rid of the e3 pawn. However, Alpha Zero decides to create another one that will open dangerous lines for all its remaining pieces. So have a look and see what you would play for white now in this position. You can pause the video. So this looks like quite an uh, innocuous uh, um, position in actual fact, but um, um, there is one thing. I mean, black has created a weakness on the queen side with uh, knight e4 takes c3, but um, that has cost black some time. And of course, a defensive piece, the knight on f6, has, uh, has left. And this leaves a weakness on the b1h7 diagonal, which um, alpha zero exploits very, very energetically. Now, it plays this nice move, uh, queen e2. Um, the idea is that um, black was actually intending to play queen c8 and bishop a6. So this move, queen e2, prepares to meet queen c8 with bishop d3 when black's Bishop doesn't get active. Alpha Zero is always very keen on um, on uh, stopping the opponent's pieces from uh, from getting active. But after Bishop F6, in we go with G4. This is the strategy. We've created this um, this little um, point that we can attack close to the white position, and then we start attacking it with G4. And what you notice um, uh, here, Alpha Zero throws in a Queen B5, so attacking this pawn on D5, which will be weakened after G takes F5. Um, and after um, these moves, king h2, e takes f5, rook g1, all of a sudden, from nowhere, uh, we've got a, a weakened diagonal here, because this pawn is, uh, is on prise, and also a, um, a rook on g1, attacking the pawn on g7, and of course bishop takes h6 is, uh, is threatened. And, uh, well, we looked at the... Uh, at the uh, well, the ensuing amazing tactics in an uh, uh, in an earlier video, and I'll put the link up just so that you can uh, can follow that one. But well worth seeing. Some quite amazing play uh, ensued there. But the start of it was this um, ability of Alpha Zero. You know, it seems like to to start up an attack from pretty much anywhere, um, create a point 
uh, close to uh, to the, to uh, to your position that the um, uh, that's easy to attack and then do everything in your power to weaken diagonals and open lines, weaken open lines and get your rook on open files pointing towards the opponent's king. So yeah, that was um, th those were five great uh, Alpha Zero uh, strategies. I hope you've um, I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, there's going to be many many more. Um, and I hope you enjoy this way of uh, just presenting these uh, these strategies, just uh, little snapshots um, of um, yeah, real creativity and insight that uh, well, just are so so typical of uh, of Alpha Zero's play. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Exactly, and, and more videos coming soon. There'll be loads more, so keep watching.